Today, preparations for LTC's yard sale are underway. Should you go? This reporter says yes. And is Jeff Ibbotson going too far? 416th Death March 2 is this December. Will they survive? The news at noon starts right now. Hi, I'm Rich Rowland. And I'm Gabriel Rodriguez, bringing you the news live on tape. It's Sunday, November 4th, 2012. Our top story today, the Mesa Church of Christ is celebrating Mission Sunday. And as the church gets ready to review the efforts of the mission ministry over the past year, with more news on the mission in Taiwan, here's Rich. Rich? Thank you. I got a chance to interview John Camp, who's working on Taiwan. Let's go to that story. I'm now here with uh, John Camp, and we're going to talk about Taiwan. Can you tell us what Taiwan's like? Well, from a uh, spiritual perspective, uh, Taiwan is, uh, has all kinds of religions. They have ancestor worship, they have Buddhism, they have Taoism, Christianity, and that includes any form of Christianity. Catholicism is like 2% of the entire population. So uh, it's, not, it's not a fertile place uh, for the gospel, but of course, uh, there are people who are still eager to hear. Can you tell us why uh, Mason decided to support uh, the, the work in Taiwan? Well, uh, I have a uh, friend there that my wife and I went to Taiwan in the 80s with our three-month-old daughter, and we, we uh, worked for a church that had been established there for many years, for three years. And after three years, we moved down to southern Taipei to start a new congregation. And so I had asked the... Uh, individual members of the congregation if uh, they'd be willing to uh, help support uh, Peter because he was starting a house branching out from the church he'd been with for a long, long time to start a house church. Can you tell us about Peter, the, uh, the, the preacher out there? Yeah, Peter's uh, obviously a native-born uh, Taiwan. He speaks Taiwanese and Matt. Peter's just uh, is in love with Jesus, always has been, always takes every opportunity. How many people are actually in the congregation? Well, this house church, uh, I think on Sunday morning they have somewhere in the in the teens, because he, he only started that a couple of years ago. The uh, Da Taipei Church, Greater Taipei Church of Christ, uh, I think they have about uh, 20 some. So you mentioned you just went last month. Can you tell us about that trip? All in all, it was a thrill. I'm glad Harry went. Uh, it's so much better than going uh, by yourself. Mm -hmm. So, and I was I was just glad that Harry got a chance to. To be so energized by uh, Chinese-speaking Christians, because you know, you, nothing ever moves you as much as when you speak in your native language. Right. So you got to just let go. So that was great. Well, thank you for telling us about this. And uh, um, for an extended interview, please log on to www.masonchurch.org/missions. Gabby, thank you, Rich. I also had the opportunity to speak with Jeff Ibbotson about the Mexico mission trip taken by the 416 group. Here is an abbreviated version of that interview. I'm sitting here with Alan Jeff Ibbotson, who has headed the 416 mission trip to Mexico. Thank you for joining us, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, unfortunately, so could you please just tell us a little bit about this mission trip? It was a good mission trip. It's a little bit different than what the Mason Church may be used to. Uh, for mission trips, instead of a more of the campaign uh, style of mission trip, we did a, a VBS, and we did that primarily to uh, build relationships and to equip the congregation down there, uh, rather than a primary focus of evangelism. So you could say that we were going down there as more of a resource than anything else. Right. Definitely. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, would you consider this trip a success then? Yes. And again, that goes back to our, our goals. Is while we didn't have any sp uh, baptism specifically on our trip. Uh, that wasn't our purpose. Our purpose was to go to equip them so that they could evangelize their area um, and do it more effectively since they are in that culture themselves and they speak the language better than we do. And so we did that. We, we equipped them properly. We taught them how to evangelize uh, both um, outside of the congregation and also within the congregation with their children. Um, that was the portion of the VBS that was successful. So then, th thank you for sharing that with us. So what would you say then is the best part of doing mission work? The best part of mission work for me personally is just having my eyes open to how many other Christians are, are there in the world. Um, every city I've ever been in, no matter where it is in the world, um, I've always found a, a faithful, strong group of Christians there. And it's, it's amazing. Well, that sounds wonderful. Thank you so much, Jeff, for joining us. Thank you.
uh, on this interview. Uh, you can see more at mesachurch.org. You can see more photos and other pieces from this interview. Back to you. Thank you, Gabby. And with El Salvador, we also have an interview with Curtis Allen. We'll go to that interview right now. Hi, I'm with Curtis Allen. We're going to talk about the mission in uh, El Salvador. And Curtis, can you tell us about uh, what it's like in El Salvador? Uh, yes, Rich. Uh, in El Salvador, it is a, uh, a very poor country, uh, a lot of poverty, and uh, the members of the churches of Christ there are, are very poor for the most part. Uh, the churches themselves have been doing fairly well in under difficult circumstances to preach the gospel to their communities. They have uh, grown and, and increased in numbers over the years and have generally have, have made improvements in, in the things that they are striving to do there. The preacher, uh, Benacio, in uh, the town of San Pedro Puxla, he is uh, about 40 years old. Has six children. Uh, again, lives in a very humble uh, home of uh, made of brick and, and some wood and, and uh, corrugated steel. Lives, and lives about a, an hour's walk from from the church building. The church there has existed in that area for over 50 years. Can you tell us why uh, we got involved in uh, in El Salvador? Myself and and my, and my son and a friend, we started an organization, a nonprofit called Manos de Esperanza. It was after a, a mission trip in 2002 with Jesus Rodriguez. And after that, we all had became uh, just in love with the people, their hospitality, their friendliness, and we wanted to do something to help. So we continued to, to travel to El Salvador and helping with the children. Of, the, of these families to go to school. Our main focus has been humanitarian work. Uh, we help kids go to school from the poor families in the area for a small amount of $300 a month. We, I'm sorry, that's correct, $300 a year. We provide all the school supplies they need for the year, as well as a monthly food supply supplement to the family. Uh, and that's encouragement to the family not to take the children out of school to work. We have done other humanitarian projects of putting in some uh, drip gardens for, for people and providing uh, water tanks for, for those in areas where there's no immediate portable water to their, to their area. Well, thank you for uh, sharing this with us. Uh, uh, we'll go back to you. And finally, we have a special report on Ghana, West Africa. For more, here is our reporter in the field, Paul Garrison. Paul Garrison giving you an update on Ghana, West Africa, 2012. Our trip there was somewhat of a, an experience because we had a passport mix-up in the beginning and our uh, flights were rescheduled many times. This gave me a, a chance to accompany David Lusk's granddaughter who was traveling alone up until the time I met her in uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and uh, put David's mind to rest. Our first sermon presentation of the World Bible School material with uh, Stephen Black, we found ourselves uh, exhausting our material and people were getting up and leaving before we were finished, but it turned out that uh, these folks were actually getting up and going down the road and getting baptized by uh, the local preachers. We didn't know until they had gotten back and we were finishing up with our lesson. Okay. And special thanks to Paul Garrison for that special report. For the News at Noon, I'm Gabriel Rodriguez. And I'm Rich Rowland. Stay tuned for Jerry Cantrell right after this.